Welcome to our new mini series here on Maker's Muse of tips and tricks to make your 3D printing experience a heck of a lot easier, starting with five design tricks you can implement right now. Let's get started. Number one, everything is smaller than it may appear. Now I fall into this trap all the time when I'm modeling. Here I have my one-way bearing that I designed and if you zoom in, when you're modeling stuff, it looks huge. So you might sweat the small stuff when you don't really need to. For example, have a look at this little chamfer here on the edge of this roller. Now, you know, how big is that? It's really hard to judge scale when you're in the virtual 3D environment. But this chamfer, if you look here, is actually only 0.5 millimeters. That's absolutely tiny. And especially when you're designing for FDM 3D printing, you know, your layers would be 0.2 or something. That's so, so small. And when you see the final product, it's almost indistinguishable. So my tip here is to always have a ruler on you or a pair of calipers or some measuring device to constantly give yourself a reality check when you're modeling to figure out how big things are. Because for example, this whole roller is actually only six millimeters in diameter. That's that's tiny. So number one tip is when you're designing, have a ruler or caliper on you so you can constantly check things and don't sweat the small stuff because it's very easy in CAD to have things be a lot smaller than they may appear when you're in the design phase. Tip number two, add clearances to your models, but do it cleverly if you can using parameters. Now, again, this is Fusion 360, but you can do it in many other CAD softwares. And as we know, nothing is accurate in the real world. You can design things perfectly in you know the virtual world when you're gonna make something nothing comes out absolutely perfect. So you need what's called clearances. I have my clearance gauge that I use to test what a 3D printer is capable of. And then I can pump that number back into my models to make sure parts don't fuse when I don't want them to. And for example, this design here, I've got clearances between each of these blocks. So if I printed them, they wouldn't fuse together. But what's the best way to design in clearances anyway? Well, what I like to do is add a clearance after the modeling stage that I can then easily edit. In this case, I actually using a parameter that I can enter a number in and everything will update. So for example, this is my cube and I've designed it to be an exact size, but then I've added a push pull here to change its size by my clearance amount. And that's done in Fusion with this press pull uh, option here. And I find it best to do the clearances after the modeling stage because the different 3D printers may be different and you might need to tweak these and it's easier to have them separate than built in the original sketch. So for example here, if I go to modify and drop down to change parameters, what I've actually done is I've created a clearance parameter at 0 0.3 uh, negative clearance. So for example, let's say my 3D printer is very well tuned and I wanna change this down to 0 0.15. I can do that and then you notice it'll update and everything updates with a much tighter clearance. And I've done that in the press pull by adding the distance of clearance, which is my parameter, instead of adding just a arbitrary number. So it's a little bit advanced this tip, but my advice is to add your clearances in after the main modeling stage and to add it in as a parameter versus individual numbers so you can easily tweak them if you need to improve those clearances later on. Tip number three, take advantage of cross-sectional views to improve printability of your models while you're still in the design stage. Now, we're all familiar with using G-code preview with your slicer. That's great and you can see how things will print, but why not take that advantage of something similar when you're in the design stage to try to remove the need for support material? So what I have here is a core for a three by three twisty puzzle like a Rubik's cube that I designed last year. And if I go into inspect, and sectional analysis, I can select a face, for example, this one here, and I can see how this object looks in cross-sectional view. And this is very handy because this is like, we can see how this object would print on an FDM 3D printer. And you can see as it goes up, it will print like this. So far, not so, not bad. You know, you can bridge, we've, we've bridged before, that's not bad. But then, oh, oh dear. That's over thin air. So what I did is I took advantage of learning this in the design stage cancel that, and I started adding in supports. And after a whole lot of trial and error going back and forth of figuring out what the section analysis looked like and where I needed to add support, I ended up with this final design because I needed to clear uh, those little points where I was gonna put screws and nuts. And don't worry about it looking complicated, this was a lot of trial and error going back and forth, but you can see using the section analysis that this part has full support over all the overhanging areas now. 
So take full advantage of the section analysis tool in your CAD software to figure out if you can add supports or parts or modify things in the design stage to make your object easier to 3D print later on. Tip number four, Windows 3D Builder can repair pretty much any 3D printable object. It's absolutely insane. It's free, it's built into Windows 10. So you do need Windows 10 to use it, but it is the most powerful free repair tool I've come across so far for repairing models, for example, exported from games or designed in 3D modeling software, but not really made 3D printable by that software. It fixes everything, it fixes holes, intersecting geometry. It's absolutely crazy. So for example, here I have a bunny that I've completely destroyed. It's got holes in it, you can see right through. Um, I've reversed the triangle orientation in some areas and it's saying quite rightly down here, one or more objects are invalidly defined. Click here for repair. This is free software, you click it and then just like that, it repairs it. Now it does look a little bit strange these holes that it's patched kind of look strange because of the shading, but if I fire it up in Mesh Mixer, you can see that it's actually done a really good job of completely fixing this model for 3D printing, making the STL file completely manifold, and it's good to go. So that's tip number four, 100%. If you have a file that has issues or errors, chuck it into 3D Builder, and most of, most of the time, it repairs it with no issue. It's really cool. And now for the last tip in this design stage of the mini series, use 3MF instead of STL wherever possible. There are many reasons why, but basically STL as a file format is very much outdated. More and more 3MF is becoming accepted. Why use 3MF? Well, for a start, the file size is dramatically smaller. This complicated bunny lattice, you can see the file size in .stl as a ASCII STL, and then you can see the file size as a 3MF file. It's hugely different. So for example, if you have low data or you have a very high polygon count model, save as 3MF and it's just so much easier to move around. Secondly, 3MF stores a lot more data than STL. You can store color data and other stuff like that. So that's gonna be very important in the future in terms of higher end 3D printers and your compatibility of your models with them. So as my final tip, use 3MF where you can. As I said, most slices are accepting it now because it is the future and we need to stop using STL. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of this mini series, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found these tips valuable and the next one on the slicing stage and tips regarding that will be coming out very, very shortly. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing to Makers Muse. It's my aim to empower your creativity. Thanks for watching. Bye.